Return now to that breaking news. Facebook saying that former President Donald Trump is suspended for two additional years. We're now joined by Bloomberg's Naomi Nix, who covers social media for us. He's on the telephone. So, Naomi, thank you for jumping on with us here. Uh, is this a surprise? Um, it is a surprise, actually. We weren't really sure how um, Facebook was going to uh, respond to the oversight board's uh, ruling. Now, remember, uh, Facebook established this independent body to essentially oversee how it enforces its content moderation practices. That body a month ago said, we uphold uh, your decision to indefinitely uh, suspend Trump, but chastise the board for essentially um, making up a consequence for Trump on the fly and not having enough established policies and processes to govern um, the political uh, speech of politicians. And so Facebook was required to respond to the board within within a month. Um, and, and, and this announcement today is saying, hey, this is how we're going to handle Trump. We're going to suspend him for two years, and then we're going to see if he continues to be a risk to public safety going forward. So, Naomi, I don't follow this nearly as close as you do, and that's why it's great to have you on. My recollection of what that expert panel said is, okay, it wasn't – you can keep doing it, but – You've got to come up with some clear standards. There's some sort of objective standards to be applied. Does this announcement include those? Are they saying what the specific criteria are for keeping him suspended and, by the way, letting him back on? Yeah, they do. Um, they do have some. They are offering some additional information. So one of those information is kind of the, pre previously Facebook had a policy of granting an exemption to its content moderation rules for politicians and. Um, you know, saying that the argument was, hey, look, people should know what politicians are saying. Now they're saying we're actually going to curtail that a bit here. Um, and and in only in the rare cases um, will we do something like that. And we're actually going to be um, a little bit more uh, clear about our standards around that. Um, you know, they're also talking about, um, you know, making sure to prioritize safety over expression, you know, when they are taking action, you know, on on an influential user who, who might be a threat to public safety. Well, so anyway, that's one thing I'm really interested in. How much of this is because of what President Trump said and how much of it is a concern that he actually got people to act on what he said? Because that's a critical distinction in the law. You can say all sorts of outrageous things as long as you're not actually getting people imminently to do something violent. Is that the issue here about specifically what happened on January 6th? Or is it broader that just you said some things we think were false or really offensive? It's, it's not about the offense. It's, it's actually they're, t they're taking into account the overall political context that the comments are being made in. And so is there a risk? The question really is, is there a risk that this comment might incite real-world violence um, in, in the real world? And so you're really kind of marrying those two um, issues together when you're making that kind of calculation. And so, you know, at the time, um, there was... Uh, you know, a, a mob storming in the Capitol. Yeah. Um, and so any sort of encouragement to those um, rioters, you know, might have stoked further violence. And that's what you saw yeah. the Oversight Board, you know, essentially said, that, that the risk to, to real-world harm yeah. was, was real. 